Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to talk um, quite briefly about uh, a small study uh, we carried out, I think it was in 2017, which kind of um, looks closely at the issue of misdiagnosis. And, um, and so yeah, so the title of this study was, um, what's the agreement between, between scabies diagnoses made in an early child care centre in Auckland? So we just went to one early child care centre, um, and it was in South Auckland. And the objectives were to estimate the prevalence of scabies in the child care centre and to assess the degree of agreement between diagnoses made from a, a doctor a nurse and also a dermatologist and uh, and the the doctor and the nurse uh, had a lot of experience uh, serving communities uh, in South Auckland and and uh, I think we're quite familiar with scabies you know it, it's a high prevalence area uh, so so it's, I think you find it's quite interesting what we found um, and we didn't give them much guidance on on how to diagnose uh, scabies. We kind of left it to them, but I think the dermatologist did provide them with a little bit of advice. Um, so, so uh, what happened is we we asked for parents to complete a questionnaire that had a bit about socio demographics uh, treatments that followed um, history of skin infections and itch. And, and so the children were seen, or we ideally tried to get them to see the GP separately, then they'd go to the nurse, and then to the dermatologist. So all independently in separate rooms. And each of the clinicians didn't know what the other um, had diagnosed. And images were taken to be reviewed by another dermatologist. And subsequently we also um, asked a, um, uh, a clinician, a doctor from the World Scabies Program, to have a look at the images as well, but, but, but they were not a dermatologist. And results were compared to recently released international consensus guidelines, the IX criteria uh, that Simon mentioned earlier for scabies uh, using the Delphi process. And so in this um, early childhood education centre there were 52 uh, preschoolers of which 40 participated. Uh, the mean age was 3.6 years and of those 40 that did participate, 24 of them went to each of the three clinicians. So um, some, clinician, some clinicians had to leave at a certain time so we didn't get all 40 to see the nurse, the doctor and the dermatologist but 24 of them did see all three clinicians. And uh, there's a ethnic uh, breakdown of, of the, the children there, 60% uh, were Pacifica, 20% Māori, 15% uh, New Zealand European, 5% Indian. And so yeah, of, of those 24 children that seen all three clinicians, um, the, the doctor diagnosed that not nine of those 24 had scabies, which was about 38%. The nurse diagnosed about six of them, six had scabies, 25%, and the dermatologist, uh, their prevalence was zero. zero didn't um, think any of them, and, and again, I think that's because they were looking for burrows and, and um, things like that. And when, when we looked at the Delphi criteria, um, as defined by in the IX paper, uh, we found that about 18 of the 24 children would have been categorised as having scabies, which is about 75% of the 24. And, um, and you, know, you could say, oh, the dermatologist didn't find any. Um, maybe the nurse and the doctor were wrong. But we, we did go back to the same uh, early childhood care centre a few years later. And children were identified with having scabies using PCR. So no scabies was there. And also talking about um, 
Simon would ring the, the parents when, if we'd found positive and um, explain to them what had happened and would give treatment. And one of the mothers uh, said to, fed back to the, um, the teachers that after having the treatment, it was the first time their child had, had blood on their sheets from scratching in about a year. So we, we're quite certain that, um, that it was scabies. Did you ask if they had any other skin conditions? Because yeah. I, I get blood on my sheets because I've got eczema. And yeah. also have eczema. So. Yeah, we did ask. So there was a survey and we asked about other skin conditions. But they'd probably been receiving treatment for a lot of other things. Um, but when they received the treatment for scabies, that, that was a comment that the mother made. So we, we kind of think it's, you know, is that, but yeah, as part of the survey, we do ask about other other skin infections and conditions. And so, going back to this um, this table, you can see the uh, the agreement between the different groups. And so, um, so for the nurse, there was agreement in two cases with the doctor, with the GP. Okay, so the, the GP is the, uh, the crimson square, and so two out of the f six cases that the nurse diagnosed were the same as, as the GP. Um, for the GP who diagnosed nine, all of those nine that the GP diagnosed also met the criteria, the Delphi criteria, including them. However, using the Delphi criteria, which identified the 18, the, the GP kind of missed half of the cases in terms of the Delphi criteria. Um, and yeah, agreement was found in four out of six of the cases found by the nurse to Delphi, but then there were two that, that were outside of that. Um, okay, and Delphi, that's the international criteria. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Does that apply to the images or that someone actually said kids? I can't quite um, Yeah, that was retrospectively looking at the images the and correlating that with their symptoms. So yeah. the um, Delphi criteria, you have to have either papules, typical papules, and one symptom, so usually it's in the animal, uh, or atypical papules, which is usually like maybe just one papule, uh, and, and two history features. Is there a reason why you suspected scabies as your gold standard as opposed to confirmed scabies? Because there's also a dark for confirmed scabies? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the way that um, our Australian colleagues diagnose scabies is they effectively use clinical and mm -hmm. suspected scabies as the diagnosis. So that's effective to, be, to have a false problem, like it's suspected rather than confirmed. So if you don't narrow it down, you would know, mm -hmm. have to do confirmed. But, but if, if you don't confirm, you're probably going to be missing more. I think, and it, well, no, I mean, a, if you look at the scaling criteria from the paper that you mentioned, there's a suspected, yeah. group, but then there's also a confirmed, clinical and confirmed. Group from it, the international scaling. I think there's, there's suspected, clinical, and confirmed. Yeah. Yeah, well, the confirmed. I think we get the report in the next talk, we'll talk a little bit more about the diagnosis and why there's disagreement. Why are we taking this approach? <laughs> yeah, so I suppose what, what I'm trying to highlight right here is there's a huge amount of disagreement in the diagnosis. And so if we um, took what the dermatologist thought, which was zero cases, we'd be missing a huge amount. Which well, you don't know that because you haven't done to see how many cases. What's your goal standard? 
Well, I, I suppose we thought at the start that the um, dermatologist would be but he missed them, so I think we... Well, you don't know, they might be correct. Well, we went back two years later and, and, and there were cases... Yeah, well, I suppose we could disagree, but um, if, you went to the, if you went to the daycare centre and you seen these poor children's skin, they'd been living with that for a long time, we had a, a, a response from the mother, you know, who said about their child's skin after having the treatment, you know, and, um, and yeah, I think, so there's a lot of misdiagnosis uh, that's, that weren't meeting the needs of these, these children who looked like they'd been suffering for a long time. Okay, so, yeah. So, yeah, so um, the conclusions for this was that there's little agreement was shown between the three different clinicians um, from zero up to 75% using the IX criteria. And the dermatologist explained that they were looking specifically for burrows and they didn't see any, which is why it was a zero. The GP and nurse explained their diagnosis was informed by history and examination. And again, both these clinicians have, have um, a, a, a lot of experience <coughs> serving communities in um, high prevalence areas. And the recent guidelines for scabies diagnosis X criteria included a wider scope than those used by clinicians in the study. Um, so we think that the study highlights the need for standardization and diagnosis and the benefit <coughs> of using an accurate and sensitive objective diagnostic test. And that's where things like um, the PCR that Shelley will talk about shortly can be really useful to clear up, um, you know, whether or not we think it's scabies. But yeah, we, we do feel that scabies is highly likely to be misdiagnosed, misdiagnosed by health professionals. Those are the references there, so yeah, I don't know if anyone wanted some more questions. Can you guys hear the conversation? Yeah. Maybe if we could just um, talk a bit louder, please. If you are, yeah, so I forget where we were. Oh, well, I think this highlights that there is a lot of uh, people who are suffering from this disease and they don't know where to start. clinical definitions of scales um, and so uh, the issue is I think as I'll talk about in the next uh, talk that there's some definitions are very specific uh, so likely to get a lot of false negatives but if they see the very specific signs it's very certain it is scabies whereas others are more sensitive. So the issue there is false positives. Um, so uh, it's, you're likely to pick up a larger proportion of the scabies, but some of them may be misdiagnosed. Um, and so the subjectivity <coughs> between different clinicians, I think, argues for an objective test, which is why we've been uh, relying on for uh, uh, the test for the PCR. So if, if, we, if we take what you're using as the Delphi assignment, and, and it's very difficult to generalize because this is only 40 kids, and in this case even 20, only 24, but we generalize that 75% that of kids have scabies, then what are the implications of that for the relation, the causal relationship you're saying between scabies and the cutaneous fever? 
seventy five percent of kids don't have a fever and they're fever. Well, I think this is. And uh, you're saying the attributable risk is forty percent based on a univariate odds ratio. Well, this study was done in a childcare centre where uh, the prevalence of skin issues in general was extremely high compared to other child care centers during our study. You know, we found that it was almost impossible to recruit from uh, high decile early child care centers because they just didn't perceive that there was an issue with skin. Um, so I don't think you can generalize <laughs> from this child care center to say that 75% of kids have symptoms. <coughs> Uh, this is this was really you know this was during uh, meetings in counties Manukau where teachers were sort of crying out for some uh, some help with uh, the skin issues in their child care centre and that's why they engage. So yeah, we don't think this is this particular child care centre is not representative of the whole population in any shape or form. <clears throat> All right, should we uh, move on to the next presentation? Thank you very much.